Hi there, this is Solitary Ronin from Solitary Ronin Films and welcome to part 8 of my Kurosawa Before Rashomon season. Today we're going to talk about The Silent Jewel from 1949, sometimes known as The Quiet Jewel from 1949, starring Toshiro Mifun and Takeshi Shimura. They're paired up again, this time as father and son. Shimura was 44 at the time this film was made, and Mifune was 29. So theoretically they could be father and son if Shimura had Mifune at age 15. But Shimura is given a grey hair wig, or his hair with lots of grey through it, to make him look a lot older than even 44. I'll start this um, review by asking what do Christopher Columbus, Mussolini, Ivan the Terrible, Hitler, Lenin, Tolstoy, Nietzsche and Al Capone have in common? Um, answers in a postcard. But one of the things they have in common is syphilis, allegedly. So obviously Drunken Angel was TB. And The Silent Jewel, Quiet Jewel, is Kurosawa's syphilis film. Um, syphilis is a disease that still exists, even in 2015. Um, there was 45.4 million cases of syphilis. And in that year, 107,000 people died from syphilis. Um, there's four kind of stages of syphilis. You can google pictures of people with syphilis lesion, lesions if you really want. But obviously in 1940s, um, during the war, post-war, before penicillin was kind of widely used, um, syphilis was a huge social disease. Um, so this film is about the S word. Um, so Mifune stars, the film opens up in 1944, he's in a mass unit, he's a surgeon and he's operating on a patient um, for some silly reason. He takes his gloves off while he's operating, he gets a cut because the scalpel has been put round the wrong way on the accessory table. He cuts his finger but because the the patient, a soldier called Nakata, is in serious condition he just carries on. And then he overhears Nakata while recovering with another soldier talk about his social disease. And then obviously Mifune is concerned and gets Nakata's blood test and then asks himself to have a blood test and it turns out that he also has the social disease. So years pass after the war he is in, he works in a, a poor hospital with his father, Takashi Shimura, 15 years his senior. Um, <clears throat> he has a long term <coughs> Excuse me, a long term fiance miss out, but he doesn't tell her about his condition. He hasn't told his father about his condition because of the shame um, with being associated with the social disease. Um, there is a young trainee nurse. Um, Miss Minigishi, who is an ex-dancer who got pregnantized by a layabout um, who abandoned her 
so she becomes a trainee nurse but she's a bit of a, a loud mouth um, a bit of an eavesdropper she finds out his secret because he has to inject himself um, with salvaran which is kind of the medicine at the time to try and get rid of the social disease he eventually tells his father in just a wonderful scene, it's one of the classic um, Shimura Mifune scenes where they're both sitting on a couch um, Kurosawa pretty much just leaves the camera there, very much like Paul Schrader in Blue Collar with that famous scene with the three characters um, because at first Takeshi Shimura is angry because again the association with the social disease is obviously having um, sex with strangers that you don't know um, so he's furious because of the shame and you know how could he do that you'd never think his son would do something like that and then Mifune actually explains that happened during an operation and obviously Shimura's attitude changes towards him a little bit it's a wonderful scene there's a great scene where they're both got a cigarette in their mouth, they're both lighting a cigarette at the same time and offering each other the light at the same time. It's just a wonderful little bit of business. And Mifune explains why he can't tell his fiance, even though you do f feel yourself saying, you know, just tell your fiance it happened during an operation. Because obviously if you just said to your fiance, I have syphilis, um, they jump to they would jump to conclusions that it wasn't um, caught in a an honourable way and he explains he doesn't want because she's the kind of woman that if he said even how he got it and you know you have to wait for years until it's cleaned up or cleared up she would wait and he doesn't want her to waste her life um, this is a, a kind of rare performance by Mifune because he is very restrained in the film. He has essentially like a a coil that's been tightened up. Um, but you know at some point that spring might um, explode. But it's a very pent up performance because again as it stated this is a film about moral conscience versus desire. You know, he says at one point that he's waited all these years um, for Missou during the war and then coming back from the war and of course now he's got to wait and he doesn't, you know, it's that moral obligation against his desire and physical desire um, to be with Missou. And then at some point during the film he meets Nakata, now post-war again Nakata is dressed more westernised as we discussed in Drunken Angel and um, all the baddies are more western dressed um, again this film was made under censorship of the occup occupying forces so there's, there's obviously mentions of baseball because the censors like that if you talked about baseball because there's a a wonderful little subplot about a boy in the hospital who's had an appendectomy so they're all wanting to um, pass gas so the F word is used in the film um, for farts and there's a whole baseball thing with the kid um, there's also kind of references to again the poverty, the state of the um, community that they're in, the state of the hospital um, so you couldn't be overtly about the conditions that Japan was in post-war under the occupation but again there's just like little references in the film so he meets Nakata who says he's been cured of the social disease but in actual fact he never went to really see the doctors he now has a pregnant wife and of course syphilis can be transmitted from a woman to 
nor pregnant nor, nor pregnant fetus, no, a pregnant woman to her fetus, um, which can lead to um, abnormalities or stillbirth. And of course, Nakata hasn't told his wife about this, um, but eventually he gets um, Kyoji Mifune's character gets Nakata to come to the hospital to, with his wife. His wife overhears that he had the social disease and she might have it and it might affect the baby. And um, this is a film that, you know, you could be cynical and say it's almost like a public information film about the dangers of syphilis and um, being social with people. But it's just done so well that you kind of just skirt over that. Um, Kurosawa doesn't shy away from the dark stuff that's involved with this um, as we find out what happens to Nakata's um, baby he also uses there is some nice dynamic camera in the film he uses a kind of railing with flowers as a time passing device for the passing of the seasons um, there are some very effective quick tracking shots and things like that so there are technical flourishes within the film it's based on a play so a lot of it is quite static but again Kurosawa's use of compositions um, make it always interesting again you have another Mifune Shimura pairing um, which obviously we would get in the next film coming up in the series as well. Kurosawa also plays with expectations, or audience expectations a lot. We find out that Misao hasn't visited for a while. She comes back to say she's actually going to get married, even though she desperately wants to be with Kyoji, and the marriage is the day after her visit. Um, and that leads to the coiled spring um, exploding slightly but again it doesn't go the way that other films may go perhaps certain um, American films have went when you have that oh the person that he really loves and the person that really loves him is getting married the day after but he can't bring himself to that. I mean, you will find yourself at times maybe shouting at the screen, just tell her what happened. Um, but obviously for dramatic purposes that doesn't quite happen. Um, and then the character of Minigishi, the trainee nurse who's played wonderfully um, and her transition from kind of a good time girl to um, someone that again cares for Kyoji herself. Um, Again, so there's no kind of easy resolution apart from, you know, as far as Kyoji's happiness. You know, Shimura has the line that it's just as well he's not happy because if he'd been happy, he would have turned into a snob. Um, and you have Mifune, you can see his inner turmoil, but you root for him. You want him just to tell Miss out exactly what happened. Um, so they can be together but again Kurosawa doesn't necessarily let the audience off the hook um, in that way so this is far from Kurosawa's greatest work or anything like that but it's still absolutely wonderful um, it's only about an hour and a half and I think that's good because the pace really goes um, it's really well constructed you have you know the humorous subplot with a boy who must fart um, and then you have a lot of the darkness um, it's really quite a well balanced film again if you're being cynical you could say it's just a kind of melodramatic um, public service film about syphilis but I think that's been a little bit too cynical just because how well it's handled, how well it's acted, um, 
it's just it's probably my favourite syphilis film of all time. Um, it's just quite wonderful. So that's the Silent Jewel, also known as the Quiet Jewel. This is on um, Yumi Pictures DVD, part of the Kurosawa collection. Even though, as far as I'm aware, they've only also released Ma Madadayo, which I've got up there. Um, the print is actually very good, because um, if you followed this series, some of the prints of these early Kurosawas aren't very good. Um, but the print on this DVD is actually pretty good, and the subtitles are pretty good as well. Um, for all you non-Japanese speaking viewers. So thanks very much for watching part 8. Just a couple more to go of Kurosawa before Rashomon. Um, let me know if you've seen The Quiet Jewel, Silent Jewel in the comments below and what you thought of it. And hopefully you'll join me again for part 9 which might be my favourite of the 10 films before Rashomon. So this is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films saying thanks very much for watching, appreciate the support and farewell. <laughs>